Science communicator extraordinaire and Instagram super scientist Sam Yamin asked me a question on Twitter. What's the most unique animal heart that you know of? Note the date here, it's asked in November, it's now February, but you know us doctors, we just get a kick out of making people wait. Now of course I took unique to mean weird because that's what we all want to see, isn't it? So in this video I've compiled some of the most alien, unorthodox, or just plain massive hearts. Before we begin, let's do a little reminder of your human heart, assuming you're not one of the handful of people in the world who have two hearts, or the even smaller number who have no heart whatsoever. Your mammalian heart has four chambers, two atria and two ventricles. If you haven't heard me mention the term cardiac output before, remember this is how much blood a heart pumps in one minute. For us, that's about five litres at rest. So let's start with the biggest heart that there is. Well, relatively. Most vertebrates have a heart that weighs less than 1% of their total body weight. A human's is typically under half a percent. But the hummingbird lives its life at such a breakneck speed that they need an extremely powerful heart to pump oxygen to the ravenous mitochondria in their furiously flapping muscle cells. As a percentage of body weight, the tiny hummingbird has the largest heart in the entire animal kingdom, making up 3% of its overall weight. The avian heart is four-chambered like ours, but beats a wee bit faster. A blue-throated hummingbird was clocked at 1,260 beats per minute, which those of you that watched my last video might recall is not as fast as the Etruscan shrew, but combined with its size and strength, hummingbirds have very unique hearts. Okay, it was mean of me to promise the biggest heart in the world and then deliver you a hummingbird, so next up, it really is the biggest heart that has ever existed on this planet. That of the blue whale. For many years, urban legends, or perhaps that's a little unfair, it was our best guess, suggested that blue whales' hearts are the size of a VW Beetle and a ten-year-old child could swim through their aorta. We now know that isn't quite true and at the very least would be highly questionable parenting. It may seem strange that despite really trying hard to kill as many whales as possible for the last couple of centuries, we've had very few opportunities to get to know their innards. Whales normally die at sea and sink to the ocean floor, which itself is a monumental event providing food for scavengers for years to come. However, when they beach, gas and heat build up quickly inside their bodies due to decomposition. For the rare whales we get to study, the organs are sometimes mush by the time they are dissected out. Speaking of exploding whales, I have to mention the whale that washed up on an Oregon beach in 1970. Unsure how to dispose of the whale, they chose a radical option. The highway division decided the carcass couldn't be buried because it might soon be uncovered. It couldn't be cut up and then buried because nobody wanted to cut it up, and it couldn't be burned. So dynamite it was, some 20 cases or a half ton of it. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. It went about as well as you'd expect. The humor of the entire situation suddenly gave way to a run for survival as huge chunks of whale blubber fall everywhere. So I think, quite incredibly, it wasn't until 2014 that we actually got a chance to study a blue whale heart when a recently deceased adult washed up on the Newfoundland coast. Scientists rushed to get to the prize target, the heart, by cutting a window in the chest wall and four brave souls waded in to push the enormous organ out. From there, it was pumped full of over 3,000 litres of formaldehyde, flown to Germany to be plastinated by the same team that make the Body World exhibits, and the whole process took over a year. The spectacular finished specimen sits in the Royal Ontario Museum, and whilst it wasn't as big as most people had speculated, it's still a behemoth. I spend much of my career fiddling around in the coronary arteries of my patients, who are humans by the way. The coronary arteries supply the heart and they are typically about 4 to 5 millimetres in width at the widest point. The blue whale's left main coronary artery is 18 centimetres across. The heart weighs 181 kilograms, beats probably around 6 to 10 times a minute, and pumps 220 litres per beat, making a cardiac output of around 2,000 litres. The aorta measures around 30 centimetres across, so hardly big enough for a 10-year-old child, but more than enough room for a newborn baby. The General Medical Council has informed me that I should make it clear that putting your baby inside a whale 
is advisable in adv- inadvisable blue whales don't take the prize for the slowest heart rate though because that belongs to the host of animals that go into deep hibernation how many beats would a woodchuck beat if a woodchuck could chuck itself into hibernation well about four beats a minute from a normal 100 having said that four beats a minute is still positively tachycardic compared to no beats a minute the wood frog is the only animal we know of that literally freezes solid for seven months of the year during that time its three-chambered heart stops completely but due to the nature of its cells and body when temperatures rise it just thaws out and hops off this is remarkable for two reasons firstly the wood frog has very unusual cells with a sort of antifreeze if i freeze a human heart the cells are irreversibly damaged by water forming ice this is the principle that causes frostbite and it's also why demolition man hasn't materialized yet which is just as well as i never figured out the three seashells he doesn't know how to use the three seashells (laughs) and secondly their hearts seem to start up without any problem as you might imagine the wood frog is of great interest to those researching cryobiology before we head underwater for the coolest cardiovascular systems on the menu i mean the agenda there are a couple of honorable mentions And the reason I hesitate to put them in the list is their hearts rather stretch the definition of what we mean when we say heart. Insects have an open cardiovascular system. Instead of blood being contained within vessels like us, they have yellowy liquid called hemolymph, which flows freely around body cavities. It is propelled by a vessel with around 12 chambers in a row separated by one-way valves. In the thorax, this is called the aorta. In the abdomen, it's called the heart. So I'm not totally convinced this is what we'd understand as a heart. It squeezes hemolymph due to peristaltic muscles contracting around it. The earthworm is sometimes described as having five hearts. But again, this is also a bit of a fib as these are pseudo hearts, which are really five specially adapted squeezy aortic arches. But saving the best for last takes us under the sea where we find cephalopods like the octopus or the cuttlefish which have three hearts a systemic heart pumps blood around the body and two branchial hearts pump blood to the gills when an octopus is swimming the systemic heart stops and the animal tires quickly the red color of our blood comes from iron found in hemoglobin however octopodes use copper in hemocyanin giving them a rather royal blue blood and their blood vessels themselves are unusual with a pulsatile venous system and an arterial endothelial lining unlike any other invertebrate. Hemoglobin is red, hemocyanin is blue. You have my systemic heart and my branchial ones too. But perhaps the most unusual is also the most useful. It's a fish. Fish hearts, for a start, have one atrium and one ventricle and two additional structures, a sinus venosus and bulbous arteriosus. Neither are found in humans, unless you look at an embryo where you'll see similarities between a fish heart and a developing mammalian cardiovascular system. However, one fish in particular can be found in my research colleagues' labs here in London and all over the world, but in cardiology it's particularly useful as it's the only animal we know that can regrow its heart. When a human has a big heart attack, an area of muscle is starved of oxygen and dies, for good. But even if you lop off a whole chunk of zebrafish heart, up to 20%, it grows back within three months. By studying how it does this and the growth factors involved, the hope is that the little zebrafish can help the millions of people living with heart disease worldwide. February is Heart Month. Yes, I'd never heard of it either, but it keeps heart doctors like me relevant, so I'm just going to go with it. And therefore, please look after your heart health by not smoking, eating healthily, and most importantly, choosing parents who don't have heart disease. Single people, I'm afraid it's double bad news. Not only will you be surrounded by sickly romance on a commercial made-up day, but I'm afraid you are more likely to develop heart disease than your married friends. But hey, look at the bright side. Stressed about how to break up with your partner this Valentine's Day? Gift them a subscription to Medlife Crisis, guaranteed singledom in a matter of hours or your money back.